Hi, third year, and welcome to today's lesson on alcohols. Today, we'll be discussing the formation and some major uses of alcohols. For this lesson, you will need your uh, daughter and something to write with. I'll let you know when to start writing. First of all, let's just talk about what prior learning we need to uh, make sure we are confident with before we begin. Firstly, I can define fuel. So we should know that a fuel is a substance that contains stored energy and that energy can be released, for example, in burning. We know some examples of fuels already. We know the fossil fuels, which are crude oil, coal and natural gas. And last week, we also learned about some biofuels. Secondly, I can describe and explain what happens in an addition reaction. We're going to be referencing addition reactions later. Um, so it's important we understand that addition reactions involve the breaking of a double bond uh, in an alkene. For today's learning, firstly, I can state that alcohols can be used as fuels. I can explain what fermentation is, what it produces and the role of yeast. I can state that ethanol is the chemical name for alcohol. I can describe some health issues associated with the consumption of excess alcohol. So we're going to move through uh, these success criteria, making sure we can do all these things by the end of the lesson confidently. At this point, you want to um, put the heading into your jotter, alcohol, um, formation and uses, and we're going to start writing. You can use the headings on each slide as your subheadings and make sure you note down everything on uh, each slide. Remember, you can pause the video uh, and rewind if you need more time. So let's talk about two major uses of alcohol. Firstly, because they are highly flammable, alcohols are very useful as fuels. They're very efficient fuels and um, they're used widely. Alcohols are found in lots of different products. Um, sometimes it's useful that they're flammable, but other times it can be hazardous. So you may find that um, products in your homes, for example, cosmetics or cleaning products or um, household maintenance products that contain alcohols may have a warning on them uh, indicating that they're highly flammable so that you can take care. Another use of alcohol is as solvents. We learned in first and second year about the words um, solvent, solute and solution. So remember, a solute dissolves in a solvent to form a solution. So solvents um, are substances that other things dissolve in. Water is a very common solvent, but for some uh, purposes, it's uh, helpful to use other solvents. So alcohols uh, are often used for that purpose. We're going to discuss two main ways that alcohols are formed. And the first is the um, industrial way of forming alcohols. To do this, we need to start with um, an alkene. Alkenes can be formed through processing fossil fuels. So if we um, imagine back to when we discussed the fractional distillating column, um, when we were talking about processing crude oil, we'll create some alkenes um, in that process. And those alkenes can undergo um, an industrial process by adding water. So if we add water to an alkene, we make alcohols. Now, this um, can be represented through this full structural formula equation. And we can see that in this process, the double bond between the carbon atoms is broken and the atom from the water molecules add in. OK, so this is um, not the form of alcohol that would be used for drinking, but it would be used for other purposes, for example, um, fuels and solvents. So those alcohols might be made this way. And this can happen to make all sorts of different alcohols, um, methanol, ethanol, propanol, butanol and so on can all be made, can all be made in this way. The other um, way that alcohols are formed are through a natural process. And this is um, the way that we create the alcohol that's found in alcoholic drinks. That alcohol is ethanol. So if people are talking about alcoholic drinks, they mean the name ethanol. Okay, that is the alcohol that's present. C2H5OH is the formula. Uh, there's two different representations of the ethanol as well. And this is the substance that is responsible for that. This is an electro, electron scanning micrograph of yeast uh, particles. So yeast is a single celled fungus, fun, fungus. And each of these um, little yeast cells um, is able to produce many copies of itself quickly. That's what the little buds um, you'll see on the surfaces of those spheres are. So these are loads of um, yeast cells. And yeast is found on the surface of all living things. Um, and we can see it in this picture on the surface of 
grapes. Now, obviously, we can't see the actual cells, but we can see a sort of dusty substance that's on the surface there. Um, and that is the natural or wild uh, yeast that's found on grapes. And it would be found on other things, on apples, um, on barley grains, on rice, all sorts of things would have natural yeast found in them. When we're preparing, uh, when we're making alcoholic drinks, that happens through, because of yeast, through a process called fermentation. Okay, so fermentation is a natural process. It doesn't need any um, artificial substances, doesn't need anything added to it, although in modern um, uh, beer making, wine making, uh, etc. There are lots of other substances added, um, but the natural process is fermentation. It happens when yeast, which is naturally present on the surface of the fruit, for example, turns the carbohydrate, so in that case the sugar that's present in the fruit, within a plant into ethanol, which we call alcohol, and carbon dioxide. Fermentation is the key process in brewing and in baking. For brewing, we are mainly concerned about the alcohol content and for baking, we're mainly concerned about the carbon dioxide production, uh, which causes the dough to rise when we're baking bread or cakes, for example. And then any alcohol that's produced would be um, evaporated off in the baking process anyway. We can create lots of different alcoholic drinks uh, because we have lots of different types of carbohydrate sources. We actually haven't covered carbohydrates in this topic yet, that's coming soon, but um, different types of sugars and different types of starches are different carbohydrate sources. So depending on which carbohydrate we use will depend on what type of alcohol we create. So if we start with barley and that gets that ferments, we would end up with beer. If we start with sugarcane uh, and that ferments, we would end up with rum, although that is some, that's a spirit, so that would also need to be distilled. Um, and if we start with, rhyme, uh, with rice, we would get sake, which is a type of rice wine. This is an opportunity for us um, to also talk about um, some of the issues that happen when uh, alcohol is consumed to excess. We're going to discuss very briefly just some of the effects of drinking alcohol to excess, both in the short term, uh, so one, um, one night of drinking, for example, and then the longer term when someone has um, uh, drinks to excess over a longer period in their life. So some of the short term effects of drinking alcohol, which we might uh, talk about someone being drunk, what, what would they experience? Well, in, they would experience um, slurred speech, blurred vision, uh, they would have slower reaction times and poor coordination, um, and also it, alcohol uh, would affect their judgment and decision making. Now, all of these things happen because um, the alcohol uh, acts as a relaxant on the body, it's a, it's a depressant on the body, so it causes things to kind of function a bit slower. Um, and these are the reasons why, for example, uh, you shouldn't um, drink alcohol and drive a vehicle or operate machinery. Um, and even drinking uh, alcohol to excess over the short term can cause um, some more serious problems um, with stomach and liver um, because alcohol is a poison to the body. Alcohol is a poison to all living things. So the, the more that um, alcohol is consumed, the, the more severe the problems. If um, a person drinks alcohol over a long term and develops a dependence, then there are other effects that we need to be aware of. So most body organs can be damaged through alcoholism. These include the brain and the nervous system, the heart, the liver and the pancreas. Um, long term drinking increases blood pressure and blood cholesterol levels. These are both risk factors for heart attacks and strokes. Long term drinking can also cause a weakened immune system, which makes a person more vulnerable to infections and it can also cause social implications for example if a person isn't able to work because of their alcoholism or they're not able to develop or sustain positive relationships. So a quick recap on today's learning. Uh, firstly we needed to be able to state that alcohols can be used as fuels then explain what fermentation is, what it produces in the role of yeast. So fermentation, remember, is that natural process of making alcohol. It makes the alcohol ethanol and also carbon dioxide. And the role of yeast is that yeast must be present uh, for the fermentation to occur. Ethanol is the chemical name for alcohol when we're talking about the alcohol that's in alcoholic drinks. 
and finally some health issues so it's good to have an awareness of um, some examples of short-term and long-term effects okay hopefully that's been helpful today and uh, let me know how you get on with your tasks thanks